Well, I've done some dumb things in my time, a lot of them out here in the shop, uh, but this might just take the cake. I'm out here in the Montana garage messing around on a few things. I haven't been filming much because I haven't been doing anything super exciting, but I am currently putting together the, I got a new idler arm and I got new tie rod ends. So I'm putting that stuff on, um, kind of a fun story. I, so here's the new tie rod ends. And then I bought this fancy dancy, I don't know what this, usually it's just like a metal sleeve. This is like a pro four I don't know, I just thought it looked cooler. And it was a little more expensive, but uh, I was making an order from Summit and uh, I needed just a few more bucks to get to a certain price point to get a little bit more of a discount. Um, so I was like, what the heck, I'll just get those, the kind of the discount made up the difference. Went through and finished all the order up and everything thing and click the order and didn't realize till I went back and looked at it later that uh, this pro forged company I guess doesn't uh, participate in the sales or whatever at Summit so even though I paid extra for those to get above the threshold I needed the cost of those didn't count and so I didn't get my discount anyways struck out on that deal but the other thing I want to show you is my custom on my old so I got a new idler on here on my old idler, idler on my old idler arm uh, look at the custom bushing i got in that bad boy you betcha duct tape now of course i didn't drive it like that that was just for when i put this back together for trying to push it around the shop i still can't push it around the shop though because it's still a dragger did i mention i got new wheels they're in there i'll show them to you someday i guess we might as well talk about the difference in these bad boys real quick so here's the old idler arm again with my custom duct tape upgrade that's because uh, before it had like one of these rubber bushings on here and I pressed that off or actually let's see I'm not telling you the truth here. The rubber bushing goes In this guy. This is maybe the drag link I don't know if that's the right name for it But this comes across from the steering box with the pitman arm So this one had a bushing in here I think and I pressed that out because I was gonna obviously get new bushings and then uh, I had to put it back together to move the car around so I just did my custom duct tape bushing there just to hold it in place. But this is the old original stock, probably never been, it, I don't know, they look pretty crappy. I replaced all the bushings and stuff on the A-arms and everything in this back when I was in high school, so I might've replaced this stuff then. Probably not, probably just original. But, uh, so it's just a metal bushing with a, you know, a rubber bushing, rubber, whatever. Rubber and metal. I upgraded, supposedly an upgrade. So this new idler arm, it doesn't have the whole rubber get up. It's got actual bearings in here on both of them so inside of or underneath all this stuff there's the ball or roller bearings i don't know i didn't you can buy just a kit to turn yours into this i just it wasn't that much more expensive just to buy the whole new shooting match so that's what i did i some people call it poor man's power steering i am not putting power steering on this thing um so this is supposed to help it steer a little bit better i, I don't have any problem steering it anyways i mean it doesn't steer like a brand new car but and i'm gonna have a little skinnier tires so it's gonna steer pretty easy but i went ahead and went with this some people like when you read the reviews some people said yes you want to do that that, it makes a huge difference. Other people said, I did it, I can't tell the difference. Other people said, you should only use that with power steering. Uh, it's the internet, everybody says everything, you don't know what to believe, but I went ahead and bought it. I'll let you know in 10 or 12 years when I drive it, what I think about it. All right, one more quick comparison on these two idler arms. So this is the original one, and again, it's all old, it's dry rotted, and I can turn it on there, but only because I'm super strong. Nah, not really, but it's hard to turn. This guy though, with the bearings, it just whoop, 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 whoop. It's gotta be worth something, right? One more update on this idler arm install. Um, as I expected, it doesn't just slide right into the center link or whatever it's called, but I figured I could stack some washers and you know, kind of pull it in place. And I got this as tight as I can get it with the tools I can reach under here with. And it felt like it got started, but I can't get her to press in there. So I'm gonna take it all back out and Take it to the little shop press I have and see if I can make that work. I think I just have the pitman arm just kind of barely on there, so it shouldn't be that big a deal to take it off. I was just hoping to do it in position here, but uh, doesn't seem to be working for me. Got the first side pressed in with my handy little shop press here, um, but I got to do one more. Got to go in there like so. So let's see. I think on this one, I'm going to set. Last time I just had one socket involved, but now I think I need two. So I got to hold that. Probably should have recorded doing the first one because it was going to be, it was actually quite a bit of a pain. It's hard to keep it going straight. I figure this one will be even harder with the extra socket and trying to figure out how to hold it flat. It's one of those things where you need a couple more arms. All right, so I can see it's tilting out already. Kind of the same thing that happened on the last one. So it's stuck. 
started, but it's not anywhere close to straight. So I'll come back to the back side here and try to straighten it out. Looks like it's kind of straightening out. It's kind of binding up, so let's rebite. Mostly straight. And acting like she wants to go anywhere. I still got space in between where they're not touching. I assumed that they go in flush like so. So I got that one in, but this one's got to go. It actually doesn't want to go. It's pretty straight. Not exactly straight. So we'll try to get a little more in this corner. That was loud. I don't really want it to come shooting off there and hit me in the face. Yellow. It don't seem like it's working out that great. Now you can see how I was uh, not having much luck with the... Just trying to bolt it in, run it in with a bolt. That wasn't working at all. Can't even get it with a press. All right, this socket's a hair smaller. Maybe it'll stay centered on there a little better. Making me nervous. I don't want to just press on this because I don't want to mess up that race or face or whatever you want to call that. But this don't seem to be making any more progress. We're going to have to use some heat. All right, well, that's that struggle. I'll keep struggling. All right, we're back. I think I got her moving now. I found one size smaller socket that would fit on there. So it stayed on there a little better without warbling and I'm keeping it straight, so. Well, bam, bearings pressed in. Or these aren't really bearings. I guess this is some sort of bushing and then there's bearings. Not sure if it's necessary, right? I decided to pack a little more grease inside this little bearing that's in here. There we have it. We got that five minute job done. Idler arms installed. I started about an hour and a half ago for this five minute job. That seems about right. I think I'll go wash the grease off my hands and it's getting pretty late, but I want to, these are just bare steel, which is totally fine for suspension parts. I know, but uh, I'm gonna either take them back apart, which is really easy to do. I'll probably just leave them and wrap a little blue tape around the rubber and then the black part here, and then give them a little squirt squirt of black so that they're black like everything else under there. And we'll let them dry overnight and maybe tomorrow we'll put them on. These pieces were a little greasy too. So we'll spray them down with some cleaner real quick. You know, just for the fish. The halibut. Just for the halibut. All right. I'm sorry. It's been a while since we heard any good old-fashioned paint shaking up here in the Montana garage. Glad to finally be painting something again. Primer's dry, so now we're getting ready to paint her with a little bit of chassis black. Uh, on a side note, I made my first brake flares today. I got some uh, brake lines and brake, a brake flaring tool and some brake stuff. Maybe I showed you that already. Anyways, we'll talk about that more uh, when we get to that point. But I thought it was pretty cool. I'm easily uh, entertained or excited or amazed. I guess. Alright, that's it for tonight. We'll be back someday. Next day out in the Montana garage, got my fancy tie rod assemblies that I painted are all dried up. So I'm going to throw these on. This hopefully will be a five minute job. And sad to say, this might be all I get done today. I was coming out here to the shop and I was just informed by the wife that we got other stuff we got to go do. Maybe I'll make it back out later. Maybe it'll be another couple weeks. Who knows? Oh, we're going to try to keep plugging away though.
Oh, and with these bad boys, I just made them the same length as the original ones. Hopefully that'll get me in the ballpark. You know, all the A-arms and everything are all new, so they're probably gonna need to be adjusted. But I'm starting with just the same length the other ones were. We'll see how the tires look then. And then I'll have to do some research and figure out how to do like a home alignment to try to get it close enough to at least roll straight or whatnot. But we'll figure that out someday. There we have it. We got those bad boys all put on. We got the new idler arm, which is extremely close to the header. I had to bash the header to make it fit. And so now we're all ready to steer. If we only had, you know, a steering column. That's right. I did it. I ordered a steering column. It's in the box. It's black. It's an I did it tilt. I'll show it to you later. I don't think I'm quite ready to put that in yet. I got a few more things to do with the clutch pedal under the dash. I had to pound out these studs. There's still one in here I didn't get out. Um, that's where the old master cylinder mounted. Now it just bounced with two and the studs weren't long enough. So I had to pound them out. They're actually spot welded in there. And I don't know, for some reason, I decided to wait on that one. Well, I want to do bolt this together because it was kind of pushing the bracket back is what it was. But now I can't get it out of there with the master cylinder in the way. But this stuff's all just on here for mock-up. I got to take it back off to bleed it. Uh, so once I get these lines finished, I got to get a longer line here to get down there, blah, blah, blah. Get this stud out of here. I got to get the clutch spring hooked up. See if there's anything else I got to do under there that's just going to be easier before I have the steering column in the way. But soon we'll put that in. Then we can steer. Well, I don't have a steering wheel. Dang it. Just got done snugging up the old uh, Pittman arm. Again, luckily I got some of these big tools from my grandpa. Actually, this one I used, three-quarter ratchet. Um, I didn't film it, but I did have somebody the other day asking me why I never used Loctite. And uh, I do use Loctite, but and maybe I need to use it more often. I just kind of assume if it doesn't call for it in like instructions that I have, and if it's got either a lock washer or a lock nut, I guess I count on the lock washer or lock nut. Now the Pittman arm, I went ahead and it's got a lock. It's down here and dark. You probably can't see it, but right here somewhere, I can't see. But uh, it's like a one and five sixteenths nut and it has a lock washer. But I threw a little of the old blue Loctite on there just to be sure. I figure that's something you probably don't want falling off while you're cruising down the drag strip or down the road or at any time, I guess, that'd be bad. So she's locked and tight. What do you guys think about this little setup here? We got the dual master cylinder, uh, proportioning valve. They say you have to run one of these. I have the same master cylinder and four wheel disc brakes on the 57 over there. And I actually bought this proportioning valve for that project, but I didn't put it on. I assume why I didn't put it on is because the way it mounts, I could mount it some other way, but the way it mounts is to this stud on the master cylinder here. And like I said before, maybe or maybe not, if I didn't put that in the video, these studs weren't long enough. And so anyways, long story short, I just, went without it on the 57. I don't drive it on the street every day or ever, I guess, at this point. And the brakes seem to work fine. Now, I haven't had like any panic stop moments or anything like that. Uh, so I was thinking about just leaving it off of here, but I did a bunch of research and everybody says, no, you have to have it. So don't have it over there, but you have to have it. So I'm, I'm, I guess I'll put it on here. Um, seems like the thing to do. And then we're going with the old line lock system because again, four speed. Uh, so I just kind of started messing with this the other day. I got one of them. I got a cheap tubing bender and I bought one of them flaring tools. Anyways, this, this line here that's too short, that was my first line that was supposed to be this and I screwed it up. So then I made this one and I kind of like that. And then I thought this one, I would try to kind of follow. So it was already bent the other way. You can see it's kind of got some wiggles in it here. So this was kind of just my practice piece. I got to get another piece that's, it's too short anyhow. I want to get this down to the frame and then we'll, uh, from here, so master cylinder goes through the proportioning valve into the line lock or roll control, and then it comes out of the roll control in a single line, and then you tee it off to the two separate front brakes. So like I said, I'm gonna get this T. I have some more brake line coming from some of it. It was just on back order. I'm gonna get this T down here, and I'll probably try to find a different one that I can mount to the frame. Anyways, I'll figure that out. Uh, we'll get down tear to the frame, then we'll tee off. One will go here, and then one will snake around all the way to the other side. You guys see any problems with that? I kind of had fun doing that, so I'm looking forward to getting the brake line and, and uh, figuring out the bender and uh, making those little flaring tools, or making those little flares and stuff. It's kind of fun, so kind of looking forward to that. I didn't buy any fuel line yet. I still got to put the gas tank. Fuel tank's up there. I might get a new one. Still trying to decide if... Uh, 
I'm going to top this thing off with the old carburetor, or I still might throw the Fitech from the DD Speed Shop 57 Chevy on there too. I'm going to do that, then I probably got to get a different, I don't have to, but I would probably order a different fuel tank, you know, that had provisions maybe for an inline or an in-tank pump. I don't think you have to have an in-tank pump, but I don't really want to run that fuel command center that the uh, Fitech comes with if you don't, you know, if I don't have to. Anyways, enough rambling. You ever get the feeling that you're being followed? Mr. Mooster, what are you up to? You coming up? We got work to do. Plus, those claws are sharp. Careful, mister. You want the lug nut? Guess not. Moose, come on, let's go jack up the car. Don't get under the tires, that would be bad. Careful now. We'll put this under here for pet safety. What we're trying to do, if Moose would let us, is, uh, let's see, got too much stuff in my hands, including the camera. These are the little tiny studs that came on these wheels, or came with the uh, disc brake kit. And I need, with the wheels I bought, same thing happened, I tried to put those wheels on there, studs weren't long enough. The wheels I bought need longer studs too, so we got some of these three inches from Moroso. <clears throat> this neural is like, what would it be, like 20 thousandths bigger? These are like 0.54, and these are 0.56. This one was a 0.55-ish, and it pulled in there. These are half inch, I was gonna switch to half inch lug nuts. I'm gonna put half inch lug nuts on the back, studs and lugs on the back, but I couldn't find a half inch one. Well, this was just from local, and uh, this is long as they had, and it wasn't quite long enough, but I got it to pull in there, and then I found that it wasn't quite long enough. I didn't think it was gonna be, but I pulled her in there to find out. If I stick with the half inch stud, then I have to drill out the rotors, which is what the stud goes through. And I don't really want to do that. So okay, I'm going to put half inch on the back. That's where the power comes from, right? So uh, three eight should be fine on the front. I didn't build it, uh, my uncle did, but that's what he has. He has half inch on the back and three eighths on the front. So the NHRA rule book just has a rule about how far the stud has to go into the lug nut. Doesn't say anything about the diameter of the stud. So I think we'll be good to go. Uh, so the only worry I have is this neural being just slightly bigger. Hopefully I'm gonna be able to get it to pull in. We're about ready to find out. Seems to be working, got a little more to go. This might be noisy. Progress check. guys can see that on there we still have maybe three sixteenths to pull it in it looks like it started into the knurled portion so I guess we'll keep going and see if something breaks or if it pulls in there progress seems to have slowed yeah still slowly going all right, we'll keep ugga ugging and see if we can break something. Hmm, not looking real good right now. I can't seem to get it to uh, go past that last little bit, maybe an eighth inch more than the neural left. Go ahead and grab a new washer, because the other one was just kind of was weak and it was just deforming the washer. But it seems to have kind of stopped uh, pulling through, but we'll hit her a couple more times. Little update, still ugga ugging with the uh, air gun or whatever it's called. You know, that thing. 
Um, I got rid of some of the, I had different bolts and nuts and it seemed like that just was too much space. I got a hole in the bottom back of the lug nut, so it doesn't matter. We can go all the way in there. So I just found a nice heavy washer. This was a leftover from the body mount kit with the right size hole. And uh, we are ugga, ugga in. And it's, uh, yeah, I just can't get. I mean, it's super slowly going. I don't know where the best to see it. I mean, there's like a little less than an eighth to go. And uh, it's barely going still if, if the compressor is full i got as much air as i can it'll act like it's turning it for a second but it never really seems like it's it, i mean it's slowly going in there i'll keep fighting a little bit longer i don't know if it's going to make a difference i guess i really don't want to take this off and put it on the press i guess i might have to do that but uh, i'm going to try and throw these guys in the freezer tonight I don't know if that makes a difference, if it makes it just a teensy weensy bit smaller that'll pull through there. Then I'm worried about them being cold and frozen, are they more likely to like break when I'm putting all this, you know, ooga oogas on them. I'll keep fighting with this one, um, see if I can turn the air, air up just a smidge more, get a little bit more power, and then uh, we'll try the freezer trick before we do another one because this is taking too long. And if that don't work, I guess we gotta either, I wanted to avoid, I don't wanna drill these because I don't have a drill press, I don't wanna just go and have them all, you know, cockeyed and whatnot, so. I don't know. Guess the other idea is to like heat the caliper around the hole, but I don't have a torch. I got just like a little propane torch. I don't know if that is hot enough to do anything. Hmm. Things to try anyways. Uh-oh. Now I can't get it loose. Ah. I had to wait for the compressor to get the full pressure. Then she came loose. Check her out one more time. I think it's like microscopically, microscopically moving in, but it's like still, can you guys see that? Probably not. I can see it. It's like I can tell it's going in, but there's still, you know, before it was like a heavy eighth and now it's like shy an eighth, you know? Oh, and I wouldn't be using my shiny brand new lug nut to do this because you can see it's marking it up. Uh, but I am because, well, it's convenient. And the other thing is the lug nut people, they got it figured out. I need 10 of these lug nuts. They come in packs of four. You either get eight or you get 12. So. I got an extra couple. I figured it doesn't matter if I screw one up doing this. It was fine when I bought, first I bought 20 for the whole car, you know, and that's five packs of four. So that worked out good. Uh, but then, like I said, I switched from half inch studs. Those were all half inch lug nuts. Now these are seven sixteenths, I think is the size of these ones. And so I, I can send two bags of the half inch back, but I had to buy three bags or boxes of these. Marketing geniuses they are. All right, plan 12 or 13. I think I can get a few more ugga uggas on it with the big three quarter inch breaker bar. So I've been going a little bit at a time. Oh, Woo. Woo. might've reached the limit on that too. Uh, again, it's gone, but not in. Uh. I think I just went one ugga ugga is too many. Something, uh, oh, perfect. The lug nut broke. I figured the stud broke. Now I suppose it's warbled out and I'll never get this wheel off here in a bazillion years. Always gotta be something. Well, at least the wheel came off, so it's not a total shit show. Um, yeah, that's still got like a heavy 16th to go. So apparently manhandling them in there is not the way to do it. Um, what the? Hmm, hold on. Well, I've done some dumb things in my time. A lot of them out here in the shop, uh, but this might just take the cake. So I showed you that the lug nut broke as I was wrenching away with the three quarter inch breaker bar there. And I was worried about the wheel not coming off. I took the lug nuts. I had obviously a couple other lug nuts on there too to hold the wheel in place. Cause I had the car sitting down on the ground so it had weight on it so it would not try to spin so much. Uh, the wheel came right off and here's my stud. I had that washer on there. So the back of the lug nut, you know, would ride on that instead of jam itself into this little hole here. And then I'm sitting here talking to the camera and I noticed, uh, I noticed this. There's my broken lug nut. I was trying to pull in the wrong freaking stud. Oh. So now I gotta try to get that bad boy off of there. It's probably reamed all down into this hole. Uh, no wonder this wasn't going in. I wasn't even on the freaking right one. Yep, that's uh, that's not real bright. All right, I guess we gotta keep going though. So uh, find maybe a little pipe wrench. That's gonna be on there pretty tight. 
I don't know. Well, here's my uh, attempt at getting it loose. Actually, I think it just broke loose. Maybe the pipe wrench slipped on the thing. I don't know. I think it turned though. I don't know if I can hold the camera and keep everything. Well, if it's loose, I was holding, trying to hold that with my foot. It turned a little. I think I got it. Let me set back up and get this damn thing off. Gotta thank my grandpa again for the big tools. He's got this uh, cheater bar with two different sizes on it, so that bad boy fit over the pipe wrench. And we got her loose. Of course, if it wasn't for my grandpa and his big tools, that big old breaker bar, I wouldn't have broke that off in there. All right, uh, I guess that stud's probably in there pretty good. Hopefully it'll still come out. Um, yeah, so that's why it's turning. It was turning. It was looked like you know it was going somewhere. It was just deforming the hell out of that lug nut. All right, well, good thing I got two extra lug nuts, so I'll go find another extra lug nut, and then I guess I'll try the same thing and uh, make sure I put it on the right stud, and maybe I'll stop if it doesn't seem like it's working before I break stuff again. I'm gonna try this again. It should be pretty hard to screw this up because it's the stud that's sticking way out longer than the rest. That's the one I want. Uh, somehow I wasn't smart enough to figure that out the last time. <sighs> All right. Try again. Well, I guess it turns out I'm stronger than the Ugga Ugga machine because with the old breaker bar and when you put the lug nut on the right stud, it pulled it right in there like butter. So uh, that five minute job took an hour and a half again, but uh, now I got, uh, I'm not good at math, I guess nine more to go. So let's do it. I just went and grabbed the wheel and I stuck it on there to make sure that these lug nuts are long enough and they are indeed long enough. Uh, I didn't show you guys that part because I'm keeping the wheels a secret just a little bit longer. Sorry about that. You guys can keep guessing. If somebody guesses it, I might tell you. I might not tell you. But uh, what kind of wheels did you think? Uh, people have been telling me like what kind of wheels they would have used, but what kind of wheels do you think I went with? Uh, we'll find out sooner or later. I want to get the tires mounted on them first and then maybe show them on the car. I can't put the back ones on because I got to get them and then get the rear end out and figure out the rear end. Uh, but I could maybe put the front ones on when I uh, show them to you guys, we'll see. Anyway, so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna just pull them all in, a few Ugga Uggas with the air impact there, and they're just kind of barely started, but I'm gonna do that to these other, obviously I gotta knock these two out, hopefully that one will come out that I sucked in there really good. Knock those two out, uh, get these three started, I'll put a washer on all of them, and that way I can put the wheel on, set it back down, and not have to like take the wheel off and move the washer. I have extra washers, so I think I'm gonna try to get ready where I can get all of them ready, put the wheel on, set the car down, and then suck them all in with the big breaker bar. So that's the plan. Hopefully I don't screw it up again. just to get set up to where we could get the tire or the wheel back on the ground. So I have, uh, this is the one stud that's already pulled through. I put some of my new lug nuts on them so I can get it tight. I had to get the wheel at least tight and centered. So these, this one's not pulled in, but that's what's holding the wheel tight. Um, I, all those studs, I kind of pulled them in with the Ugga Ugga gun, but then they all just, as soon as I tried to put the tire on, I knocked them and they came loose and I had to sit there and kind of redo that again once the wheel was on. <sighs> But now, they're all ready. Got the big breaker bar, I got the weight on the car, and we'll just go around, round and round, and suck them on in. And hopefully it works. It's a couple days or it might actually be a couple weeks uh, since I was last working on the wheel studs on the other side and I'm finally getting around to do it on this side and uh, one thing about it is I like to do things the hard way but eventually I kind of figure it out sometimes so I found a little bit easier way to do this instead of putting the tire on and going around fighting with the lug nuts and stuff so just got one at a time here. I got another, I, I'm sure there's another socket. Actually, I couldn't find a deep well 
three quarter socket with a half inch. I could have used a three eighths inch drive now. But anyways, I found this as I was digging through my grandfather's toolbox. It's got a three quarter, kind of a homemade gizmo there. And uh, anywho, I also used one of his giant screwdrivers. I just stick this here in the old slotted rotor. And uh, I can actually just suck them in like this. Let's see. Yeah, that's the right thing. So it turns out this is a heck of a lot easier than how I did the other one. Eventually I figured this stuff out. So that was easy enough when I finally figured out the right way to do it. Uh, I did start doing this wheel the same way, but I actually bent this. I don't know if you can see it, but this is one of my spare lug nuts again. And actually, you know, torquing that down to pull those in, it actually bent that shank a little bit. And then once you get the lug nut about three fourths of the way in there, then it starts to bind up. So I had to find a different bolt or a different nut. So this is just an actual lug nut from something else that was in my bolt bin. For some reason I couldn't find uh, my deep well three quarter. That's a half inch drive that I can use on the air impact. So I had to kind of get creative and find a different way to do it. And that uh, actually led me to the easy way to do it. So I'm glad I got that figured out. On to the next project.